Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Ohio Guys here. I'm Krishna Campo, and today I'm joined by another voice actor in the scene. We have Susie Young. I think Susie. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Good. How are you? <laughs> awesome. It's uh, great to have you uh, here for your first interview and in, in the fan side of things. <laughs> and. Yeah. Uh, before we do the interview, I mentioned that today is actually my birthday at the time of this recording, mm. November 7th. Happy birthday! <laughs> thank you so much for having me. <laughs> no, thank you for making the time. I know we've been trying to work things out. You know, last year was a little mm -hmm. too early when you broke out at the scene. <laughs> You've been very busy this whole year of 2020. So we have some questions that we really like to uh, ask you about. Cool, yeah. <laughs> so, first of all, in your experience, you know, Sue being the newer face in the scene, uh, what is it like working in the industry today? Um, well, it's really amazing. Um, I still am trying to wrap my head around it, to be honest, um, because it just feels so fresh to me still. Um, like, I came from uh, Boston originally, and I was working at a, a full-time job there for several years. Um, so I never would have imagined <laughs> coming to this point um, and this far uh, to do voice acting basically full-time now. Um, so yeah, it's it's been an amazing ride so far. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm glad to hear that. Uh... You know, as I know, as to on the DVD uh, commentaries, you mentioned about Boston, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, making a huge jump, you know, from your job into the voice acting world. You know, you really contributed a lot, you know, giving us your amazing voice uh, skills. Mm -hmm. So upon, you know, you being, you know, here, you found your footing. What is your favorite show you have worked on? It's still got to be Kimono Friends for me. <laughs> So far, it's like, right, it's the first thing that you've ever done. It's, it's sort of, you know, you're emotionally attached to that. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. It's it's one of those shows where it's super cues. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's got that charm where it kind of even feel like an anime at times when you're watching it. And that's the funny thing where, where it, it, not to get to jump too much because I will be asking more about it, but... Right. And it's one of those shows where just the way it's animated, the way it has its own gravity <laughs> physics, it, yeah. it, it makes you laugh even more. Yeah, honestly, like I could not ask for a better first show, a better first experience. Um, like I, I just feel so happy that it was with people who are just so cool and so chill, um, who are super welcoming um, for me, and I'm so happy that they gave me the opportunity to have my first anime, um, not only as, you know, Kaban, um, but as, like, two other characters, too. I was like, whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's got a really special place in my heart, and everybody has put a lot of love into that. And Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. I think this was a great way for any actor, you know, especially if they start new, like like you, to, you know, get their feet wet, to, you know, be part of Kimono Friends. I had this special journey. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's something great that we had sound cadence so that, you know, they they just, the way they just announced it out of nowhere, big <laughs> surprise. Yeah. They sold the show of August 2019, great month, you know, just, just nothing but these uh, announcements they've made. Like one of them I, I want to talk about, uh, they when they licensed uh, Galaxy Express mm -hmm. 999, uh, why don't you tell us about working on that film? Yeah, um, so I think that was not too long after I did Kimono. Um, I was actually visiting uh, Texas um, during my break, you know, just to see some friends and then I, um, like Amber contacted me and she was like, hey, uh, just so you know, we, we cast you for uh, this role yourself that you auditioned for. <laughs> I was like, what, again? <laughs> so um, yeah, I stayed there for a bit to record. It wasn't um, like a super big role, but I was still um, really grateful that she called me back for it. And um, that was a really fun experience working with her. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, no, she's great in uh, bringing people in. You know, she's from the Midwest, so uh-huh. she's got some good connections, you know, from people from up there and then even in the East Coast. So, and she's really good about, you know, trying to get some new, oh, new yeah. names in, mm-hmm. into these uh, projects that she works on. And, you know, she happens to bring you in on board. <laughs> and it, it's, it's great that from there on, things have, you know, snowballed afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I'm, I'm just super grateful to Sound Cadence, especially. Um, like, there's just so amazing at what they do. And they they bring in great people to bring in like new people. Um, and they give a lot of people a, a chance. Like, honestly, if it weren't for them, like I wouldn't be on this journey, I think. <laughs> so I'm very grateful to Sound Cadence for everything. <laughs> Definitely. And I'm excited to see what, what else they do from you know, until we get into 2021 and and beyond. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then just coming back to more of Kimono Friends. Uh, now we can, you know, we can gush about it. Right. <laughs> uh, what was it like working on Kimono Friends? It was a dream come true. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I never thought I'd be working on an anime, but... Um, like that um, for the first time but like I said there was just so much heart and soul poured into it like you could actually feel it from you know Marissa and Howard and everyone involved in the project um, to get talent from all over the the states basically like that's that's really amazing Um, the fact that you know they had even small roles they had like each individual actor in for those roles um, so I was really amazed by the work ethic um, surrounding that whole project um, and even, you know, like collaborations with um, animal um, care centers and everything. It was just, just everything about it was like, <laughs> it just felt so wholesome and heartwarming <laughs> the whole time I was working on the show. And um, yeah, it just, it, it was a really good feeling working on it. and. Um, Although I was nervous at first, um, they really made me feel comfortable and made me feel at home, basically, working on this. <laughs> you no, know, like, you know, again, we, as we touch upon with Kimono Friends, for me as a fan, I knew about it since, like, since when the memes came out, almost like around <laughs> 2016, 2017. Yeah. And it was stuck in, like, the, in the limbo with other shows where... It didn't seem like it was going to get dubbed, either because it just didn't have it. It didn't have the it factor mm-hmm. to get to have like any company in the states to pick it up for a dub. Right. And again, Sound Cadence because it's the the new dog in town. Mm-hmm. So you know now they start like okay now they have, everything's free game. They can pick up whatever they want, mm-hmm. and companies are like yeah you know if you want to dub our shows go ahead. And Kimono Friends was the perfect answer <laughs> to make it happen. And as you mentioned, you know, it grabbed the best cast list from across the country. Like, it was from, again, exactly from the East Coast all the way mm-hmm. to the West Coast. And, like, mm-hmm. you just... It, <laughs> 2019, again, was a special year. And it wasn't just Kimono mm-hmm. Friends, a bunch of other shows. They... It's almost like the first time we had this sort of collaboration where no matter where the actor lived, they were going to be in Kimono Friends. And it gave us a great chemistry, mm-hmm. you know, just hearing different voices, you know, from other places and just hearing them in one show, right. you know, it was just, and I, I mentioned this to like some of the other uh, cast members from Kimono Friends. It's like grabbing different ingredients to make the yeah. perfect entree dish. That, that's a perfect analogy, I think. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like not too much from like, west side it's not too much from east or texas you know it it just feels like a a new novel thing that's you know amazing so (laughs) perfect analogy yeah definitely and another reason why i appreciate this show and i'm sorry if i keep rambling on for the viewers out there but i want to emphasize this i loved how kimono friends was family friendly when it wasn't trying to be you know yes we had the Get the cute ammo girls. They have their stories. So they have their own backstories for each characters. You know, they have their own emotions. And 
and this is a great show that in in that in any of the uh, cast members they you know without having to mm-hmm. be worried about it being <laughs> too too edgy being too too risque mm-hmm. so it, so anyone can you know just sit down with their parents or siblings or the family members and say hey you know check this out and mm-hmm. probably a good way to kind of introduce them to anime and see yeah. what it's about yeah, I, I totally agree. I actually show this to my mom, too. Um, she, she's not, like, familiar with anime, so she didn't really understand what was going on, but I could definitely show it to my mom, at least. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's not even a complex story, either. You know, yeah. it's it's too cute to just mm-hmm. see the way they interact. You know, it's... it's mm-hmm. Each episode's fun. Like, you know, we could do the, the ones that are doing each other with the... Uh, the little toy swords, the little boop on the head. <laughs> yeah, it's cute. <laughs> yeah, that'll forever, you know, be a good memory, and I can just make a gif of it and watch yeah. it over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, the bloopers were amazing. I just threw that out there too. Like I wasn't even expecting it to be recorded because um, I was previewing the scene. I was like boop, and Howard got it, so <laughs> it's there now forever. <laughs> Perfect, perfect timing, and you know it always helps. You know, just adding the, the little, the little ingredient that you wouldn't even think of putting in yeah. until you try it. <laughs> yeah. All right, now you know stepping from Kimono Friends. Uh, now we can get to some of your other stuff you've worked on. Uh, so tell us, uh, what was working on Grisaya Phantom Trigger? <laughs> it was also a good experience. Um, so I think. I can't remember when exactly I did it, but it was a while after um, Kimono and Galaxy. Um, So uh, I auditioned and Marissa had me in. Um, I was surprised that I got it actually because I don't consider my accent game (laughs) very strong. Um, So I was a little bit self-conscious with my British accent, but um, uh, luckily I had some like accent coaches like on the line. So um, they were able to, uh, you know, kind of fix my pronunciations a little bit um, with that. But overall, like, it was also a very fun project. <laughs> yeah, and I remember this one because it was on Kickstarter. And mm-hmm. I do believe this is uh, Sound Cadence. is our first ever uh, Kickstarter project that they have done. And the best of my memory. So, you know, I was it was good to see that there were fans out there that were dedicated enough to contribute and make sure that this uh, series got its dub. Right, yeah. <laughs> so for those of you out there who are watching this and who did contribute, thank you all. And I'm pretty sure all the other cast members are happy for that huge <laughs> contribution. Yeah, thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and now we can uh, make the transition. So from Sound Cadence, from your start, to Funimation, you got to be part of my favorite uh, franchise series that's been going on for almost 10 years now. Uh, what was it like working on a certain scientific railgun T or season three? Yeah. Um, so it was the first time I actually worked with uh, Jerry Jewell on this, and I'm, I'm super grateful that he brought me on because um, initially I did like a, a little bit um, in one of the episodes. And then, um, like, I think a week or something later, he called me back for an actual role in the show. So um, I'm, I'm glad I made, like, a, a good enough impression to have him call me back for something bigger. Um, like, I wasn't actually expecting her to have, a, like, a big role, but she actually has, like, her own arc. Um, so Kariba and her doppelganger, essentially. Um, So I think that's it's so funny to me because it's the second time where I'm talking to myself as as a character. Um, (laughs) So it it was really interesting. And the second character also happens to be a robot, which I think is really funny, Um, (laughs) uh, which draws parallels to like Kaban and Lucky Beast and stuff. But um, not quite as as like wholesome (laughs) as Kimono Friends. But um, it's still really cool. Like, um, I'm glad I got to play uh, both aspects of those uh, characters. And it was, it was really fun to work with Jerry. <laughs> yeah, 
Now, he's been a great director for this whole franchise series. It's, mm-hmm. uh, like I said, been going for almost 10 years. And I remember he was at a uh, convention uh, a few years back where, I don't know if I asked him or another fellow uh, uh, fan asked about this question, about the casting. Mm-hmm. He said that that every time he has to direct a new season or a new version of the show, he gets told to go find 20 girls. And afterwards, <laughs> go find 20 more. And it's like, no. <laughs> Yeah, there's so many girls. <laughs> I, I applaud him <laughs> for being able to scout that many people every time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's a skill on its own. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and I'm, I'm glad, especially with, you know, with anime, with certain series, like, they are so good, you know, with bringing in new characters and, and then, you know, this, when they bring new characters, now we, now we have to find more actors to voice them. And also it, it helps newer actors to fill those shoes in because, you know, with so many new ones, it's always that different voice tone that they yeah. need. That's it. It's now it becomes even harder to try and like, you know, bring up a veteran to tweak the voice. So it right. makes more sense that, you know, they bring like a new one like you mm-hmm. or someone else to, you know, pay those girls. So yeah. I, I get you <laughs> after this, we're going to get more girls afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> All the girls in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And another show you got to work on. And this one has also dominated the uh, anime meme world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was working on Kaku. Kaguya Sama Love is War. <laughs> yeah, that was actually really fun too. Um, so I play Onodera, and um, although she doesn't do too much, you know, so far, um, I'm super happy that Morgan uh, got me on to play her, and that's also been a really cool experience. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the show, uh, and just like Kimono Friends. It was also in limbo too, where it, where people were not sure if it was if it was going to receive the English dub, and because it was licensed by Aniplex, which they don't always, you know, dub the stuff, which is understandable. You know, there's oh, it's it's a different company, and then having Funimation to come in and do the whole recording, you know, uh, aspect that mm-hmm. also helps, you know, getting like shows that the fans would love to get dubbed to you know to make it happen. So it's it's great on um, Formation Sport to to double show like this yeah. that has that has gained a great uh, <laughs> fan following and that you know and has told a uh, a interesting uh, story and just having great characters you know mm-hmm. and just one show like this yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> all right and uh, another show you worked on. Uh, that one that just got announced a few weeks back. Mm-hmm. Uh, while I was like, working on a part of Ranman. <laughs> yeah, it's it's actually one of my favorites of the season so far of what I'm uh, working on. And so I auditioned for the part, um, well, parts. <laughs> and then um, Caitlin brought me on as Shalian, which, um, yeah, I really love that character. Um, I feel like she is the one who's like closest to my normal range, so to speak. Um, but yeah, like, like <laughs> it's really fun, like playing playing a really cool character who gets to do cool stuff. Um, and working with Caitlyn's also super fun as well. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, she's been great, you know, especially from. 2020 and there's no hiding the fact that this year has been really rough especially with mm-hmm. racial tensions yeah it was a great thing that she decided to give a lot of actors poc actors mm-hmm. a chance you know you know you have we have you and M- emmy though mm-hmm. uh, representing the asian uh culture and then for her to bring in uh Lee George yeah. and the Taza to represent the African American community, and you know, just putting all you guys in just one show, it's it's amazing how, you know, how actors of POCs can have a chance, an opportunity to spread their wings more, yeah, and to get and to get more shows under the belt, so that way they can, you know, they can get the experience 
and use your experience for even more shows beyond beyond that. Yeah, definitely. Like I think it's it's super important, especially these days. Like POC voices are heard more and more, um, which I think is really important because you know, as as a kid, if you're POC, you know, you kind of want somebody to look up to. Um, you know, feel like, oh, maybe I can do that someday. And you're you're kind of setting an example for future generations、um, out there who are watching and enjoying anime or cartoons or video games.、Um, and so, yeah, I I really appreciate all the directors and and casting、um, people who do give a, a lot of POC more chances、um, to appear in these mediums、um, and inspire、uh, the youth to come, essentially.、Um, so. Yeah, <laughs>、um, and a Rama is is super diverse, and I think that's super awesome. <laughs> yeah, it it definitely is.、Uh, you know, I've got to see the first two episodes. You know, I mean, I enjoy the whole concept. You know, the whole.、Uh, I guess it was Tyson Reinhardt. He said best. It's basically the wacky races of anime. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, pretty much. And, yeah, and again, back to the POC aspect. You know, it's. Especially, you know, with someone like Caitlin Glass、mm-hmm. on the helm of a director to open the door for other POC to know that they do have a place behind the booth,、mm-hmm. that there are directors like her that are open to have them, you know, with them recording in the same、uh, studio, you know, for other shows, you know, from in the, in the next, you know, year or so, you know, with all these new enemies being licensed, so. Mm-hmm. We'll see, you know, how you know the rest of the year plays out, and how 2021 will play out as well. Yeah, yeah, I have a feeling it's it's going towards a, a good trend.、Um, yeah, definitely, the inclusion of POCs is, you know, for better or for worse, it's like very very recent.、Um, but also with、uh, remote recording, that has also opened、uh, a lot of doors as well. Um, just in general, so that directors can hear more voices, because、um, I think a lot of times they might be,、uh, they might have certain casts stuck in their in their head,、um, whereas you know this allows them to、uh, explore more、um, people out there who are also capable voice actors, and I think that's a, a really great thing. So.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, definitely, and you know, the future is too, is too, you know, bright, and you know, there's so much that can be done. So yeah, <laughs> you know, so and we will see, you know, how things will pan out in the coming months, in the coming years.、Mm-hmm. For sure. <laughs> All right, and here's another question, one that really coming by surprise, and. All the people that have also been on your career,、uh, what was it like working on Misfit of Demon King Academy? Yeah,、um, so it's it's actually not my first Bang Zoom title.、Um, the other one is coming out at some point <laughs> later down the line. But、um, yeah, so. Again, coming back to the point of remote recording, that has basically opened doors to、um, basically using different talent pools in different areas.、Um, so that was really how I think I was able to even tap in into this.、Um, kind of similar to how、um, Xanthi and others、um, from LA were able to、um, record with Funimation for the first time.、Um, so. <laughs> Um, I guess they liked what I did、um, the first time, so they they called me back for、uh, Misfit of Demon King Academy, and、um, so yeah, I, I it was directed by Steve Staley, and I had a really good time with that as well. <laughs> yeah, and it's amazing. Again, as mentioned,、uh, recurring remotely. Yeah, this is you know you're so we you know we we've gone we've seen you jump from. Uh, sound cadence for animation. Usually, some really small roles, additional voices at Sentai, 
And now you get to do voices with Bang Zoom with their Crunchyroll titles. So mm -hmm. it's it's amazing that you get to, you know, be all over the place, getting to utilize your voice anywhere as long as, you know, directors and studios are willing to open their doors for you, you know, with the skills that you have, you mm -hmm. know, to be in that show like, you know, Misfit of Demon King Academy. Right. So, yeah, you know, I've, I've enjoyed it. It's an interesting show, very different. And I, I just love it how there's always the, a mishmash of actors. You know, again, I was expecting to hear you because I was more used to hearing your voice and the Texas <laughs> stuff. Yeah. And then, and then hearing you get sprinkled into uh, a cast in, you know, in Crunchyroll that's predominantly uh, Californian. Right. It's, you know, it, again, it, it, I guess we mentioned before, it, it helps or it makes it more interesting just just hearing just, just have one voice that's different than the all the, all the others yeah and i i definitely feel ex extremely fortunate um to be able to work with so many different studios um honestly this year has been very difficult for a lot of people and um so i feel extremely grateful that i even have this opportunity um because with the remote recording thing, it, it has opened doors, um, definitely, but it's also, you know, kind of um, limited some other people who may not be as uh, fortunate. Um, but with that in mind, um, I'm always uh, thankful um, that I was put in that position where um, I was able to work with um, so many places. Um, so... Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I get you. And, yeah. you know, maybe things will be different, you know, once the pandemic is gone, once uh, once the studios can, you know, can reopen their doors again and that, that some of the actors that weren't able to utilize computers, you know, mm -hmm. having the luxury of having a home studio right. due to, you know, financial reasons mm -hmm. or just having, even having that, that, that know-how of having how to even uh, how do you engineer yourself. So, right. you know, I have some confidence that 2021 will kind of like shape up better, you know, for everyone. Yeah. And I and I still hope we can still, us fans, can still have like these these mi mi mishmash of voice actors. You know, it like I said, it it helps having different ingredients in one yeah. show. So, I still like to see more of that. I think the fans are enjoying it. And there's way more bigger shows that have been coming out, you know, recently that are doing like even 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 across the country. Now we got like the new uh I still call it like the new Inuyasha uh, yeah. series uh -huh. that's coming yeah. out very soon. That's mm -hmm. doing, you know, that's keeping the original Canadian voice actors and now mix, mixing them with the Calif the Californian uh voice actors. So never right. done before. And hopefully this is not the last time that we have this. I think we can we can uh, do this now with with the technology on our yeah. side and with the doors being opened up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's super cool. Like the ability to just collaborate, and I think it's it's been long enough where studios have learned and have adjusted. Um, so they know they can do this because um, because they've they've been they've been doing it and doing it very well, um, trying to accommodate everybody um, remotely during these times. So um, I'm also hopeful um, in the future that there's you know more sort of mixed casts that um, come together and make the pot more interesting, essentially. Um, but yeah, I, I'm hopeful as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> And uh, with that being said, uh, with all the shows you have uh, done, comes our funny question I, I like to ask everyone. If you could be any character you have played in real life, who will you be and you can mix and match? This is really hard. <laughs> it is. It's a tough one. Um, I'm trying to think of all that I've done so far. You know, not to play favorites, but probably Kavan from Kamano Friends again. Um, just because she has, she gets to meet so many animals. 
animal friends and um, she can go on adventures and um, essentially it's like really relaxing, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> aside from the cerulean threat and everything. But <laughs> yeah, I think. Well, Kaban's well. smart, so you would have that that critical thinking, that fast thinking on the oh, feet. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. There's, there's always that to uh, take in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I would choose Kaban. <laughs> All right. So, uh, is there anything else coming out that you can talk about, or anything you want to plug in at this time? Uh, I know there's I know there's some shows that have been announced as we record this. Yeah, um, I recently announced a couple shows. So one is um, by the grace of the gods, um, where I play this little bean. Um, named um, Eliaria, <laughs> and um, she's super cute. She tames slimes <laughs> along with the main character, Ryoma. Um, it is also a very wholesome and relaxing show, so um, if you're so inclined, go check it out on Funimation. And um, the other one today that I announced was Sumi Sakurasawa from Rent-A-Girlfriend. Um, so that was super fun uh, to work on as well. <laughs> Yeah, no, that I'm glad you you uh, mentioned that one. Uh, Rent a girlfriend, you know, still going on Crunchyroll. I've been, you know, been watching it. I finished it first in Japanese, then I switched to English because I was surprised it got English done so quickly. <laughs> yeah, uh huh. And you know, I enjoy your character. You know, again, she's very quiet, very sweet. You know, the way she tries really, really hard. <laughs> you know, to you know to be a good girlfriend and you know she's just very wholesome in her own little nature her own her own methods so i'm very happy that you can play her and just <laughs> get to be in this show because it's it's so unique so different from traditional anime especially with the whole rent a girl concept which you know it is a real thing in japan so it's mm -hmm. you know it, it, it's just something really different us westerners just having to see a show about that concept and like how we're supposed to uh take in how we're supposed to like unravel uh everything you know in, in each episode that comes out yeah absolutely <laughs> um i i recommend everybody check it out because uh i think the depth's really good i watched um one of the episodes and everyone does a really great job so i'm i'm so happy and honored to be part of that as well <laughs> You all should check it out. As long as you're 18 or so, check it out. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it is age restricted, so keep in mind for any viewers out there, you know, it is it is more adult oriented, so keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah. All right, and then just to wrap up with our last question, is there any Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, any other social media for the fans to contact you at? Um, yeah, mostly I, I use my Twitter, um, which is just Susie Young, um, my Twitter handle. And um, for Facebook, it's Susie Young VO is my uh, public Facebook page. Um, I mostly just post um, public announcements on there, but um, I just I'm more accessible, I guess, via, via Twitter. Um, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Susie, for making this interview, you know, finally happen. I'm glad the one year wait has really uh, paid off, you know, mostly for you with all your hard work and then me getting to sit back and try and enjoy these shows as they have come out each uh, each of these months. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm super grateful for all the support um, that I've had so far and um, I'm incredibly lucky. Um, to be able to be a part of so many projects at this point. And um, yeah, like, uh, hope to do more for you guys. <laughs> yeah, keep at it. And we hope to keep seeing you in anywhere else. Like, we'll see if you, you go to every, every <laughs> studio out there. That'd be, that'd be a great uh, achievement. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> yep. And a thank you to our viewers for tuning in for this episode of the Ohio Guys here. Thank you all, and we'll be seeing you all next time. Bye, thank everyone. Thank you. Bye.